Rocket Boys was a New York Times number one best-selling autobiography by NASA engineer Homer Hickam. Adapted into the movie October Sky, it tells the story of a young man from West Virginia whose dream was to become a rocket scientist. Homer and five of his friends formed a group whose purpose was to build and launch rockets. It was this love of rockets and science that propelled Homer to his career and ultimately to reach his dreams. In today's activity, we're going to build a solid fuel rocket that uses the same basic principles as rockets that are sent into space. At this time, gather the following materials. Thrust is the force operating on a rocket that propels it into the atmosphere. The formula for force is mass times acceleration. The airframe is the body of the rocket. When finished, it will be 11 inches in length and constructed from three separate layers. An inner layer of regular paper, a middle layer of gum tape that runs lengthwise, and an outer layer of gum tape that spirals down the tube. To begin, place the plastic tube at one long edge of the typing paper. Roll the paper and tube together so that the paper winds tightly around the tube. When the tube is approximately one inch from the end of the paper, stop and apply a narrow bead of glue along the edge of the paper. Spread the glue with the dauber and continue rolling the tube to press the glued edge firmly to the typing paper. Use the damp sponge to remove any extra glue. For the second layer of the airframe, Cut off an 11 inch piece of the three inch wide gummed tape. Dampen the sticky side with a sponge and press it lengthwise along the airframe. Now we are ready for the third layer of the airframe. Locate the remaining 18 inches of the gummed tape. Cut one end at a 45 degree angle. Dampen the gummed tape with the sponge. Wrap the tape around the plastic tube at an angle so it spirals down the airframe. We're moving ahead with the airframe. At this time, trim the ends of the airframe with the scissors. Remove the plastic tube and lay it alongside the airframe. Use the tube or a ruler to help draw a straight line lengthwise along the airframe. We're almost finished with the airframe. Locate the launch lug or the three and one fourth inch long paper straw. Apply a thin bead of glue along its length and attach it to the airframe three inches from one end. Use the line on the airframe as a placement guide. The launch lug must be parallel to the airframe.
Rocket-powered backpacks provide emergency free-flying mobility for NASA spacewalkers who become detached from their spacecraft. Fins stabilize a rocket as it travels through the air. At this time, we're going to build and attach fins to the rocket. If you have a Pitsco rocket fin holder, continue with this chapter. If not, you'll want to skip ahead to the chapter without the holder. First, cut out or trace the rocket fin pattern from the rocket book. Be sure to cut out the little notch on one side as indicated on the pattern. Trace the pattern three times onto the fin material and cut out the fins. You should have all three fins cut out. Next, place the airframe on the Pitsco rocket fin holder with the launch lug end down. Slide the fins into the holders, making sure that the notched side touches the airframe. Draw a line on the airframe along the length of each fin to mark its position. After the fins have been marked, remove the airframe and the fins from the rocket fin holder. Apply a bead of glue along each line that you drew previously. Return the airframe to the fin holder, taking care to align the glue lines with the fin slots. Slide the fins into the fin slots and press them into the glue. Allow the glue to dry. After the fins are firmly in place and the glue is dry, you're ready to move on. Next, put a bead of glue along each side of the fins and launch lug to increase the strength of the bond. At this point, you should allow the airframe to dry overnight. After allowing the airframe and fins to dry overnight, you can insert the plastic tube into one end of the airframe. Use the tube as a handle to hold the airframe while you spray paint it. In this segment, We'll demonstrate how to position the fins on the airframe without the aid of the Pitsco rocket fin holder. To begin, cut out or trace the fin pattern from the rocket book. Be sure to cut out the little notch on the one side as indicated on the pattern. Trace the pattern three times onto the fin material and cut out the fins. Stand the airframe upright on the drawing in the rocket book with the launch lug end down. Mark on the tube the positions of the three lines. Make sure the launch lug is not directly over any of the marks. After you have marked the tube, stand it upright against the airframe. You may have to hold it with your thumb and draw a vertical line four inches long above each mark. Starting five eighths of an inch from the bottom of the airframe, apply a bead of glue along each line. Press the notched side of a fin into the line of glue. 
Hold until the glue dries and repeat this process for the other two fins. After the glue is dry and the fins are firmly in place, put a bead of glue along each side of the fins and the launch lug. Allow the airframe to dry overnight. After allowing the airframe and fins to dry overnight, you can insert the plastic tube into one end of the airframe. Use the tube as a handle to hold the airframe while you spray paint it. Author Jules Verne wrote two books about space exploration in accurate detail 100 years before it actually occurred. The books were titled From the Earth to the Moon and Around the Moon. You have assembled the airframe, attached the fins, and painted the rocket. Now it's time to make the shock cord. The shock cord keeps the nose cone with the body of the rocket so that it can be recovered after launch. To begin, cut out or trace the shock cord anchor pattern from the rocket book. Glue the shock cord or a length of rubber band to one end of the anchor. Fold the anchor once and place a bead of glue on the top of the fold. Next, fold the other end over into the glue and press to secure it. We're almost finished making the shock cord. To complete it, Tie the other end of the shock cord to the screw eye with two double knots. Model rockets are launched just as real ones are, with electrical ignition, a launching tower, a countdown, and a recovery system. We're moving ahead with the rocket construction. The purpose of a parachute is to gently lower the rocket back to Earth at the end of its flight. The first step is to use scissors to cut along the dotted lines on the Pitsco parachute. Using a hole punch or the point of scissors, carefully punch a hole in the center of the small circle in each corner of the parachute. After the holes have been punched, peel the hole reinforcements from the backing paper and center them onto each of the holes. Next, cut six 14-inch links from the shroud line. After your shroud links are cut, Tie a line in each of the six reinforced holes. Later, the loose ends of the shroud lines will be attached to the nose cone. In addition to rocket scientists, the aerospace industry offers many other career opportunities including engineers, computer programmers, synthetic materials developers, and biologists. Welcome back. At this point in the rocket assembly, we are ready to make the engine mount. 
To begin, apply a bead of glue around the outside of the engine tube, about one fourth inch from the end. Use the dauber to spread the glue evenly. Place the engine lock on the outside of the tube. Now that the engine lock is on the outside of the tube, slide a spacer ring over the tube and engine lock. Position the ring so that about 1 8 inch of the tube sticks out of the ring. Apply another bead of glue around the engine tube, about 1 and 1 4 inches from the other end. Spread it evenly with the dauber. After the glue has been applied, slide the other spacer ring over the tube and engine lock. The engine lock will extend about 3 8 inch from the end of the tube. Position the ring so that about 1 inch of the tube protrudes from the ring. Set the assembly aside and allow the glue to dry. Dr. Robert Goddard is considered the father of modern rocketry in America. Goddard built and successfully tested the first liquid fuel rocket in 1926. Eighteen years later, Goddard's revolutionary work was displayed in the form of a German V-2 ballistic missile. We have all the parts, and now it's time to assemble the rocket. At this time, you may want to add any final touches to the surface of the rocket, such as pinstripes and decals. The next step is to glue the shock cord anchor inside of the airframe. Apply a bit of glue to one side of the shock cord anchor. Insert the anchor into the airframe about two inches or so and press the anchor firmly to the inside wall of the airframe until the glue dries. We're assembling the rocket. Now it's time to attach the parachute to the screw eye. Gather the shroud lines, keeping all the ends evenly together. Twist the ends and thread them through the screw eye. Tie the shroud lines together around the screw eye with two square knots. Now that you have tied the shroud lines to the screw eye, the next step is to attach the screw eye to the nose cone. Insert the screw eye into the hole inside the nose cone. Attach it by holding the screw eye firmly and twisting the nose cone. Do not over tighten. At this point, we are ready to glue the engine mount assembly inside of the airframe. Using the dauber, spread glue about 2 inches inside the bottom end of the airframe tube and on the outside of both cardboard spacer rings. Carefully insert the engine mount assembly into the airframe until about 1 fourth of the engine tube is extending from the airframe. Let the glue dry for 20 to 30 minutes. Now we are ready to insert the engine. Slide the solid fuel rocket engine, propellant side down, into the engine mount assembly. You may have to bend back the metal engine lock clip slightly to do this. 
The clip should be flush with the edge of the engine tube. The next step is to add the flame-proof material. Roll the chute wadding into a ball and stuff it into the airframe. This wadding protects the parachute from burning when the engine ejection charge ignites, and it also helps eject the parachute. Next, it's time to fold and insert the parachute. Lay the parachute on a flat surface and smooth it out. Fold it into fourths and then roll it up. Carefully wrap the shroud lines around the parachute. Stuff the shock cord into the airframe tube, followed by the parachute and any stray ends of the shroud line. Here's how the engine works. The battery current from the launcher heats a wire that sets off the igniter. The igniter fires the engine. The propellant generates thrust as it burns, causing the rocket to lift off. Model rockets are launched by electrical charges supplied by an igniter. The igniter must be installed correctly in order for the rocket to perform successfully. First. Insert the coated end of the igniter as far as possible into the hole in the rocket engine propellant. Bend the igniter wires flat against the rocket engine. Insert the igniter plug into the hole in the propellant to secure the igniter. Spread the igniter wires about one inch apart. Congratulations! Your rocket should be fully assembled and ready to launch. If you are using the launch guard system to fire the rocket, advance to that section of the video. To explore more activity kits from PITSCO, visit our website at www.shop.pitsco.com.